Hello, my name is Liz Schlemer, and this is a video for IME 315, Financial Decision Making for Engineers. This particular video is about defining alternatives. So when we look at the various um, topics that are covered in this class, this video falls under the area of investment analysis. So when we're looking at alternatives, um, we have to really decide about how it is we're thinking about that. And sometimes it's easy to decide alternatives um, that, you know, you can just do this or this, and it's very simple to just um, do that. We should always remember, though, that there is what's called a do-nothing alternatives. So we can always say, well, we can do this or this or nothing. Now, oftentimes that's not really considered because we feel like we absolutely have to do it, but we need to think through that process of being able to um, think about that there's always do-nothing. So the question often is, <laughs> if I did this, what would be different than if I did that? So we really need to think completely through, not just <clears throat> money or cost-wise, but are there other peripheral things like support systems or storage area or um, maintenance costs, things like that? And then we only account for things that would be different between alternatives. So for instance, if you say I'm going to use, um, have an automated system or a manual system. So I only need to consider what would be different under that. I don't need, to, if the footprint of the area would be exactly the same, I don't need to be con to consider that. If the rent of the facility, if the insurance would be the same, I don't need to consider that. So all I'm considering are things that are different between the alternatives. So as an example, we will look at, should we buy this pump or that pump? So this pump or that pump? And we have two different options. So it's a, it's kind of simple to look through, well, what are the different costs, what are the different maintenance expenses, et cetera. Um, so we need to know if there's any performance differences, if there's a different life, other maintenance is different, initial costs are different. Another example is lease versus buy of equipment. So if you lease a piece of equipment, so even just like a car or something, we put a small amount down and then we have payments over time and then a payment at the end that's often different. But if we purchase the equipment, we have a larger down payment and then a, a release at the end. So that would be also different. Another example, example is that maybe we have various investment alternatives. So we can invest in a vending machine. We can invest in Apple Sock. We can invest in a startup. We can, in, we can do nothing. So the question is, how are we going to compare all of these? And one of the main things you need to first ask yourself is, what time period are you considering? What is your analysis period? Um, and then the, the sort of um, answer to that is you need to always have equal time periods when you're evaluating something. So you need to say, well, I'm going to evaluate this over six years and then do the analysis period that way. And really ask yourself, if I buy Apple stock, will I sell it in six years? If I do nothing, will I do nothing for six years? So really having those kinds of options. The other thing is these all need to be mutually exclusive. Like you're, you're not going to invest in a vending machine and an Apple stock. You're going to do one or the other. Now you can form alternatives in a way where you say I'm going to invest in vending, Apple stock, that's one option. Invest in vending alone, invest in Apple stock alone, invest in vending, Apple stock, and a friend's startup. So you can combine them so that they become mutually exclusive, but they absolutely have to be mutually exclusive when you're comparing. So one example is um, an automated assembly line. So this is a very common thing in industrial engineering to um, consider when you're looking at evaluation of alternatives. Um, so the two the options would be: Are you going to automate it, or are you going to? Oh, sorry, you going to automate it, or are you going to have a manual operation? So the one on the upper left is a is a manual, and the lower right is an automated. So again, you will have to look at what changes between the two: labor costs, obviously, machinery costs, obviously, production rate, utilities, possibly, um, and then how would that impact dollars? So you remember in in um, engineering economy, we think through dollars. So if it's quality difference, we need to in, we need to convert that to dollars. So less um, low 
manual, low cost manual labor, but additional high cost labor, possibly, if we have need somebody to run the automated machines. So that would be an impact. Um, no conveyor, but a higher cost in automated machines and the higher maintenance costs, possibly. So, an, but it's increased production, maybe possibly more profit, um, in possibly increased use of utilities, electricity. So if we, um, if we look at the other side of it, we really need to look at, okay, what is the change? Remember I talked about it's not what will stay the same, but what will change. So is the base production going to increase? Is the facility going to be the same? Is it going to be the same managers, same delivery methods? And often the answer is yes to all of these items. So I hope that helps you to look at um, alternative evaluation and how that you go through deciding how to do alternatives.